What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Oppo Find 7a. Now the 7a is the little brother to the Oppo Find 7, which will be out a little bit later this year with the Quad HD display and some higher level specs. But is the 7a actually worth buying? Well, let's go ahead and explore that in this full review. Now think about this full review as a video test for the Oppo Find 7a because this whole entire review is shot in 4K resolution with the Oppo Find 7a. I was lucky enough to be able to test both colors, the white and also the midnight version. Now the midnight color is more like a gunmetal gray color and there are some subtle aesthetic differences in between the two devices. If you look at the white one, there is an actual texture on the back of it and you can feel it. And I actually preferred the feeling of this texture in the hand. It gave it a little bit more grip and it felt a little bit more premium actually. And the white version has white sides as well to match that back plate, but both of the LCDs on the front are black. If you're familiar with the Find 5, then you'll be familiar with their build quality. The build is very, very sturdy. It feels extremely well built. And even though it's a little bit heavy, I think that adds to the premium feeling of the phone. And I love the way it felt in the hand. Now, the only problem for some people, it's a 5.5 inch display in the front. So it might be a little tall. It might stick out of some people's pockets. Now, despite the size, it's a fairly thin phone. So compared to the Samsung Galaxy S5 right here, you can see it's very comparable in thickness. As I stated before, the device is fairly tall. So look at it next to the HTC One M8 and they're comparable in vertical stature. I have been using this device for about one month as a daily driver and I definitely enjoyed my time with it. And as I mentioned before, the device is pretty tall. So unless you have Marquez size hands, you're probably gonna be using this with two hands. And the only good thing about being so tall is that in the landscape mode, I felt it was a little bit more comfortable watching videos or playing Asphalt 8 in landscape mode. I definitely enjoyed it a little bit more. The 7A features a 5.5 inch 1080p display. And I know a lot of people are waiting for the Find 7's Quad HD display, but if you're gonna buy this device, trust me, this 1080p panel is absolutely gorgeous. It is sharp, it is vibrant, it's got great viewing angles, and I really enjoyed the screen. The one downside of the display is that it's calibrated towards the cool side, so the whites look a little bit blue, but that is on my midnight version. Now, when I received my white version, I noticed that it was definitely a warmer panel, and you can definitely tell the difference, and it's one of the most gorgeous displays I've ever seen. Now, the vibrancy and the sharpness is exactly the same, but the temperature is a little bit different, so I don't think you'll be disappointed at all in a 1080p display on the Find 7A. Another thing you won't be disappointed in is the performance of this guy because it's being powered by the Snapdragon 801 processor at 2.3 gigahertz with 2 gigabytes of RAM and ColorOS 1.2 definitely flies on the Find 7a so performance wise you will not be disappointed at all. Now gaming is being powered by the Adreno 330 GPU so you can throw any game at this if you want to. I didn't find any problems with performance and of course my favorite game Dead Trigger 2 played without a hitch so if you are a video gamer you will love the Find 7a. Now the speakers on the back are also adequate it does distort a little bit at high volumes but it's definitely a loud speaker. At this moment, ColorOS 1.2 is being powered by Android 4.3, and I know some people will be upset that it's not Android 4.4, but Oppo is very good at updating their software constantly. I've already had two updates since I've had this phone, so hopefully Android 4.4 is right around the corner. ColorOS is a skin on top of Android, and some people think it's a little bit too heavy, but if you used the Oppo Find 5 before, then you'll know that ColorOS has gone through a evolutionary change here, and I actually like the visual changes that they put on this. And I also think that there are some functionality changes that adds to the user experience for the Oppo Find 7a. Now the gesture panel here is carried over from the Oppo N1, so you can actually just pull down the notification tray from the left side and input gestures to open different apps. Now you can actually set that to anything, like I just drew an F here to go to Phoenix. So you can set that to absolutely anything that you want, and I just set up a T so it'll open up Twitter. So for people that like gesture control, you will definitely like this feature on the Find 7a. 
My favorite gesture is definitely this, and it is the most genius way of implementing the way you awaken your screen. Now you can double tap on the home button or double tap on the screen, it will awaken your screen. But the best thing is you don't even have to hit the power button anymore. All you do is double tap the home button and it turns the screen off. Now, why isn't this on every phone? I found myself not even using the power button anymore. And when it's in landscape mode, when you actually pull down the notification tray, it splits off your notifications and your quick toggles. So I thought that was actually pretty neat as well and I found myself using that quite often. I also like the way ColorOS handles your widgets, your wallpapers and your effects and you can change themes on the fly like you can see here I have the jelly bean theme to make it look a little bit more like stock Android but there are plenty of different themes that you can choose from and you can also set this two finger swipe on the screen to where you can change your ringtone volume and change to silent or vibrate so I thought that was a pretty cool implementation of the two finger gesture. On the bottom of the display you will see three capacitive buttons which are the menu, home and back keys and they work just fine. But the downside is that they're not the brightest lit capacitive keys in the world. So under certain lighting conditions, you may have a hard time seeing them. Of course, Color OS is not perfect. It does have some stutters and some lags in the UI, but for the majority of my experience, it was very fluid and very pleasing. But for those that don't like Color OS, hopefully there will be a Cyanogen Mod ROM right around the corner. Removable backplates are definitely a dying breed in the Android flagship space right now. So I'm glad to see that the 7A includes a removable back so you can get to the 2800 milliamp battery. If you pre-order, they actually ship you a extra battery, which is very nice for extended battery life. So right there, you'll see the SD card slot expansion so you can have up to 128 gigabytes of extra storage. So if you're one of those that needs to swap their battery, then you will be very happy with the 7A. So what about the actual battery life on the 7A? I was able to make it through a full day, which for me is about 10 hours or so, but it was right on the brink at the end because the one thing that I've noticed is the way that it actually handles standby time and the cellular connection, it's not as good as some of the other flagships out there. If you go to the power consumption details, you'll see cellular network and phone idle are taking up a lot of battery space. So you'll notice if you go to sleep at night with 100% charge, you'll wake up to maybe 85 or 80%. So the standby time is not the greatest. Hopefully they will update that in a software update to help with the battery life. If you do need to charge your phone very quickly, it does come with a power brick that is able to charge your phone from 0% to 75% in 30 minutes. And that's due to the high amperage power brick that it comes with and it does work extremely well. And it does work as advertised. It charges your phone very, very quickly. The only downside is maybe the length of the cable since the cable is actually attached to the power brick itself but that might be the only issue and it does charge with regular USB, but it's just not as fast. So I definitely did a little bit of celebration when I found that the Oppo Find 7 and 7A would support LTE in the United States. And I am happy to confirm that it does work on the T-Mobile USA and AT&T networks on LTE. And the connection was fantastic. And as you can see, the T-Mobile speeds Man, they were fantastic on the 7A. Now, the one thing that I did notice is that the T-Mobile network was a little bit shaky when it came to the transition of the 4G to 3G. And a lot of times I was sat there with no connection at all. Now, when I was testing it on AT&T, I had no problems at all with the LTE and HSPA Plus transition. So it might just be in my area. It might not happen to you, but let me know in the comments below if that's happened to you. I had no concern with the phone call quality of the 7A. I didn't have any kind of drop calls. I thought the earpiece was loud, clear, and crisp. People said I sounded decent on the other line. And the speakerphone is adequate for sure. So I think that it does a good job as a phone as well. So I don't think you should be concerned about the 7A being a good phone. All right, well, probably on to the most important part of this review, and one of the reasons why you're watching is how good is that 13 megapixel camera on the back of the 7A? And if you did not know, it is a Sony Exmor RS sensor on the back at 13 megapixels. But before we look at the actual sample images and video, let's take a quick look at the software. The first thing you'll notice is how fast the shutter is, and I don't think you'll be disappointed in that whatsoever. But when you look at the actual settings, 
there really is not a whole lot of manual control, but that's okay because it does very well in auto mode, and I'll show you the sample pictures later on. But on the sidebar, you'll find HDR, the Ultra HD picture, which stitches a 50 megapixel camera shot, and you also have the ability to shoot in RAW. Most of you will be just shooting in normal mode, so you won't be going through this, but if you shoot in RAW or Ultra HD, when you take the shot, it will sit there and process for a while. So that part can be a little bit annoying, but the results can be very good. Overall, I was very impressed with this camera. It's got a great depth of field, lots of clarity and sharpness. It handles white balance and auto exposure very well. Also has a good dynamic range. But the one thing that you're probably wondering about is how it makes these 50 megapixel shots because it's only a 13 megapixel camera. Well, what it does is it takes 10 pictures in a row and takes the four best pictures and actually stitches them into a 50 megapixel shot. Here's a regular 13 megapixel shot of the same picture and here is the 50 megapixel shot. Now you can see it's a little bit more contrasty, maybe a little bit flatter and here is the 13 megapixel shot cropped and when you crop the 50 megapixel shot though you can see how much more detail there actually is and you can definitely crop it even further without losing much detail. So this 50 megapixel crop shot works very good in most instances. That 50 megapixel mode is not perfect though because take a look at that one. It actually has some weird color stuff happening around the flowers because it just didn't know how to process it. Sometimes if you don't hold the camera still then it can also make some problems for it but with certain colors it just doesn't know how to handle it with the processing so it's definitely not perfect but it works in most instances. Now with regular shots in auto mode, the pictures come out fantastic. And I have to say that this is probably one of the best cameras that I have tested this year because in auto mode, it just really knows what it's doing. As you can see, color replication is great. The white balance is good. The dynamic range is good. Now it can make some mistakes here and there with the white balance. It can overexpose sometimes, but for the most part, the pictures come out fantastic in just auto mode shooting. So I have to say this is probably one of the better cameras that I've tested this year and it can definitely go toe to toe with some of the best mobile cameras that are out there. Now, when it comes to the indoor shots, it's pretty much suffers from the same stuff that most mobile cameras do. You do get some noise here, but I have to say this in low light performed way better than the flagship, the Samsung Galaxy S5. And if you wanna see a comparison of that, let me know in the comment section below for I would love to put these up together if you wanna see it. But definitely the low light performance is better than the Samsung Galaxy S5. So you can produce some amazing images images from the Oppo Find 7a but like here they can get overexposed sometimes the details can be lacking in certain parts the focus is not completely right but for the most part this camera is fantastic now there is a 5 megapixel front facing camera it defaults to the beauty mode so it'll make your skin look kind of funky so make sure you put that on the normal mode but the 5 megapixel front facing camera is very good this entire video is a video sample since I shot this entire review with the Find 7a in 4K resolution, but what about when you don't have it on a tripod? Now this is me walking around with it, a lot of people ask me for this sample footage. So here it is, it looks like it's got a little bit of software stabilization here. And let me also show you an audio sample. So let's do a pan. Alright, and this is just me walking around here. There's actually no stabilization going on, no tripod. So this is a good example of what video would be like if it was just in your hand. So what can I say about the 7A? With the 7 right around the corner, is it worth buying? Well, what I can say is it definitely triumphs over the flagships that's out there today because at $499, it is lower price and I can appreciate the fact that they did not skimp on the specs at all because it's got a removable 2800 milliamp battery, LTE connectivity, SD card slot, it's got a Snapdragon 801 processor, 1080p 5.5 inch display, and it's got an amazing design. I mean, this pulsing 
LED light at the bottom is just straight boss. It looks amazing in person. Now, the only downside is I guess it only glows in blue, but that is an amazing design. You will appreciate it when you see it in person. With it having an amazing 13 megapixel camera that's able to shoot great 4K video, this is a great sell. Now the only opposition that you may have is that you're waiting for the Oppo Find 7 with the 2K display and beefed up specs. So that is $100 more. But if you're willing to save $100, then I don't think you'll be disappointed in the Find 7A whatsoever because it stacks up very well with even the flagships out there such as the Samsung Galaxy S5 and the HTC One M8. So what do you guys think about the Oppo Find 7A? Are you just going to wait for the Oppo Find 7 and get that 2K display with beefed up specs? Or are you willing to save $100 and just go ahead and buy the 7A? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any questions at all, then make sure you hit me up on Twitter at Super Scientific. And make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more high quality videos like this one. And you cannot go wrong with either the Find 7 or the Find 7A. And if you want to see the Find 7 review, then I will definitely be getting my hands on that very, very soon. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. So thanks for watching, guys and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.